Hello and welcome to Google Fast Starters. I'm Neil Perkin, the curator of uh, Google Fast Starters and moderator, and also the founder of uh, consultancy business Only Dead Fish. Uh, so for the uninitiated, Fast Starters was a series of events that we ran at uh, Google for about 10 years, uh, live events, but uh, we pivoted them now into a series of uh, video chats with the interested and interesting uh, of the industry, as we like to say, so well-respected people in the industry. And today's guest is, of course, no exception to that. I'm delighted to welcome uh, Tom Roach, who is the VP of Brand Planning at uh, Jellyfish. Uh, so, Tom, would you care to introduce yourself? Thanks, Neil. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm Tom. I've been a, a strategist and a planner in creative agencies for around 20-odd years. So, previously, um, AMV, BBDO, BBH, Leah Burnett, um, and then latterly, Adam and Eve, DDB. And then I very recently made a move from, I guess, the traditional creative agency world into into a kind of um, completely new world for me, um, an agency called Jellyfish, which is really a digital first marketing communications company that with its history and sort of roots in search and performance marketing, um, but is, is also now um, you know, d d doing everything kind of full, full service modern digital agency. So we're increasingly doing brand and creative as well as, as all, the, all the kind of media stuff as well. Amazing, brilliant. Okay, so um, as you will know by now, uh, Firestarters is structured around broadly five questions. So we ask about uh, the best thing you've learned in your career, biggest mistake that you've made in your career, uh, your key insight for how the industry is changing and your prediction for the future. And also my kind of catch-all question at the end, which is uh, what's the question that uh, you wish that I'd asked you? So I'm going to crack straight into the first question, if that's all right, Tom, and just ask you about across all of those different um, agencies and roles and so on, what's the best thing that you've learned in your career today? Um, I'm not sure if it's the best thing, but the, the 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 thing that always stands out for me is this this idea that no one cares about your career as much as you do. No matter where you work, um, no matter how loyal you are to the place or loyal they seem to you, ultimately your career is in your hands, um, and and it, it's you know you you have to be the kind of agent of change in your career and you know in all the different ways that that can mean. And I think it, in some ways um, I, I've uh, when I sort of learned that um, was around the time that I started blogging and writing and 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 I was in a way using the agency's platforms that you know, I was very lucky to, to when I was at BBH. Um, they have BBH Labs, which is this brilliant platform with, I mean, you know, 70 odd thousand followers on Twitter alone. And so when you're given that kind of platform and and you start you start writing and blogging and that kind of stuff, it gives you a, a tremendous kind of um, sense of your own destiny and ability to 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 put your thoughts out there and and slightly selfishly, I think, uh, grow your own brand whilst your own personal brands can sound a bit cynical, can't it? But uh, you know, def definitely has that sort of impact whilst also helping the company you work for and 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 the clients you work for as well. So that I think that that was kind of my lesson, and that when I started doing that in around about 2017, um, it was tremendously helpful to me both in my confidence to express myself and explore explore ideas and debate with with other industry colleagues um, and make a kind of yeah make connections and make make um make make, make friends and colleagues in in the broader industry so that that's kind of yeah t taking your own kind of career into your own hands has to be the thing and and using all the modern ways you can to to do that really i mean it's it's interesting is um uh, bbh labs was a fantastic blog and um i've yeah, blogging for me, and I think I've heard it described like this as well, is, is a, bit, a, a bit like kind of thinking aloud. Um, so for you, was the value in kind of doing that writing about thinking aloud and, and working out what you kind of think about things? Or was it about actually creating that kind of um, personal brand and sort of connections and whatever? Yeah, I, I mean, it def definitely it has to be the thinking out loud thing. I mean, I, um, yeah, I was lucky to have that platform. I, I don't think... I'd in fact, I'd had a blog, I think, back in about 2006, and I never wrote a word. So I, I wasn't able to express myself. And it was only 11 years later when I was given that, you know, that the platform and BBH Labs that it, that it sort of started to come, um, I think, sort of through experience as well. But it, I'm, not, I'm not an extrovert. I'm an, in, I'm an introverted kind of character. So writing um, is, a, is a really useful way for me to express myself. Um, and... Twitter as well, and there's a kind of whole sort of slightly cliquey set of people on ad and marketing people on Twitter who are constantly talking about the same things to each other. Um, that that has been a, um, a useful platform for me as well, um, just to just to learn what I think. I kind of think with my fingers, I think, and I 
Um, mm. it's, it's helped me to to work out what I what I believe. Um, what gets me? I've noticed I get I, I tend to write things if I get angry about something or or kind of frustrated with a thing in the industry, and that tends to be a sort of source of inspiration. Um, and actually, I, I, the first time we we met, you, you invited me to come on Google Firesiders when it was a live thing. Um, and you talked about, um, I think it was a, an event where you were bringing brand and performance people together. And I th and and it was a kind of attempt to to force a connection in this in this world that had become divided. Um, and I think up to that point, I hadn't been particularly aware of that division. But it made me very aware of it, and it made me slightly kind of frustrated and like, what, what, uh, what's going on in the industry? That there's this, this, this. You know, you're actually having to have an event where you're bringing two sides of a, of, of a, of a bit of the industry together, and that has actually that kind of that theme has been a common one in in a lot of the things that I've written about subsequently. And actually, I can see it as a theme in why I've moved to where I've moved to, because jellyfish is absolutely at the kind of um, it, it's it's trying to do both. It's trying to do the best of both. I and mean, I wrote about a thing called the wrong and the short of it recently, which was about you know getting the the most out of brand and performance together at simultaneously. And um, that's that in in expressing that um, that I think made me realise that somewhere like jellyfish, not that I knew who jellyfish were at that point when I wrote that. I felt there was a kind of a thing in the industry and a problem with the industry, and uh, um, uh, that, that that potentially needed needed you know, exploring or thinking about or writing about or, or even doing something about and, and moving to an agency like Jellyfish is part of that. I think for me, yeah, I think that's really interesting because I'd, I'd like to dive into that a bit more if I may. Because um, uh, the wrong and the short of it is a brilliant post, I think, about that kind of. Um, uh, idea of you know the best of both uh bothism mm. i think mark Wilson calls it isn't mm. it? bothism but um you know you head up brand planning at an agency that's really come out of performance marketing yeah. uh so I, I guess i'm interested to know about the role of brand planning there and, and yeah. where you see the kind of, and how that kind of marriage of performance with the kind of best of creative agencies and what yeah. they do how that comes together in that role yeah so I'm yeah. So I'm VP of brand planning. There are I think we're a department now of twenty or people growing all the time. Um, there's a uh, there's a small number of VPs ac across the globe. So there's um, uh, two in the UK, one in one in the US, one in France, um, and that number will I'm sure in, in, increase. Um, brand planning at Jellyfish is a rel relatively new function. Um, it's you know, as I've said, it Jellyfish is an agency started out um, in the performance and search space and is I guess sort of heading up heading up the funnel I mean it's it's um in, in the last year or so we've bought a number of creative businesses and the creative and content bit of jellyfish is growing rapidly so brand planning is kind of um I think it's helping to glue things together it's helping to you know when you've got a range of different capabilities from you know the the you know technology and data and analytics um, and obviously media people, media planners, um, and we've now got organic social content creators. We've got um, a huge number of, of longer form content um, people, a, a large um, creative, kind of automated creative business. Um, and when you've got these kinds of, all these different kind of modern functions, one of the fundamental roles of brand planning at, at a place at Jellyfish is really to, to, to connect them together. And to, I, I think it's really, I mean, it's called brand planning. I think it's strategy. I think it's marketing strategy. I think it's it's helping to give our um, ourselves a, a better chance of telling a really consistent and coherent story across those capabilities and help, um, help those capabilities knit together. So in pitching, um, the brand planner's role is really to to help tie a load of capabilities and their and their perspectives together in a coherent strategy. Um, and sometimes those pitches don't necessarily have a creative output. So we don't, you know, not all of our output is creative content. Some is some a lot of it is um, adapting other agencies' content. Um, so it's not the traditional role of the the kind of pure creative strategist in a creative agency where your output is. Is going to be you know def definitely going to be an idea, maybe TV, probably going to be film of some kind. Um, we do that too, and brand planners absolutely um, have that role. 
um, but it's it's a broader one, and I think it's um, I th I think it's it, it it it's probably closer to what I think what's happened in in the in the strategy world is you know that when when strategy was first born in the in the late sixties and seventies it was a, a sort of customer voice I think it was a, an added extra bit of data and analysis and customer centricity in the process and then I think as the, as the media and creative world split you ended up with a, a fragmentation of different kinds of strategists doing social strategy content strategy creative strategy and you know in a, in a, in a more tv-led agency media strategy um and I think what you're seeing now in a place like jellyfish is a convergence um, both of those capabilities um, across the agency but also in terms of the role of strategy where a strategist is a it is 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 trying to orchestrate the whole and um you know whilst i don't yet have a fully kind of in-depth understanding of lot a lot of the channels and, and technologies and things that we're using um I, th I think people like me with a with a broader based um set of the kind of more fundamental marketing principles of how marketing works generally and advertising works within that um, mm -hmm. I think that's the the role of the strategist, to, uh, or one of the roles of the strategist at Jellyfish is to is to try and bring it all together. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'd like to ask because it's such an interesting perspective you have coming uh, from Adam and Eve DB, DDB and DBH coming into an agency like Jellyfish, and you're talking there about connecting up specialisms. And I think you said, as when you wrote about Jellyfish, that um, you know really you're helping kind of up the strategic game in digital marketing because it's been quite sort of mm -hmm. tactical. So I guess a two-sided question here. I mean, first of all, do you think still that digital marketing has, has been too tactical, still is too tactical, and needs to be more strategic if there is such a thing? Uh, and then the, com the converse of that is, do you think creative agencies are sort of failing to understand the shift towards ad tech and yeah. all the possibilities that can happen with programmatic and um, uh, yeah. influence marketing? Yeah. So on the first point, I, I, I think there's no question that, um, and it's it's the 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 less mature, the newer parts of the marketing world that have, you know, they're born very specialized. You know, you've got thousands of marketers these days who have, have only ever experienced one siloed bit of the, 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 the full sort of marketing toolkit. Um, and there hasn't been very much, I don't think, um, broader based training in the fundamentals. I think Mark Ritson's doing an, an, uh, an amazing thing um, in his you know courses, his mini MBA courses and his brand and marketing courses there, but I but beyond that, I don't see a lot of broader based fundamental marketing training going on, um, and so I I suspect that a lot of the, um, the the sort of modern marketers are are as they progress in their careers from their specialist silos, they're 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 moving on up not necessarily with the sort of fundamental skills or, or sort of the basics. So there's definitely a kind of knowledge gap there on, on that kind of digital marketing side. But having said that, I mean, what, you know, being exposed to a, a lot of those kinds of people at Jellyfish, the, the skills and, and expertise that they have is, is phenomenal in, in, in their areas. And, you know, and to be honest, I'm, you know, I'm a specialist within, within sort of creative agency world historically. And, you know that, that's you know, being a specialist is a is is no bad thing, um, and so I wouldn't in any way kind of denigrate the 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 sort of the, the specialist skills of the modern digital marketer. Although I do think that that kind of denigration does go on in the in the in the sort of broader, more traditional mark, um, advertising marketing space, um, and I think it's just it, it, it's a kind of um, snobbery i think from the brand marketing world and I, I i would include myself historically in that i i i think there's a sort of um a tendency from the the more traditional world to 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 look at the kind of upstarts and think that they don't they, they don't know as much or something but mm -hmm. it's it's that thing when you've got two slightly divided worlds who are a bit suspicious of each other and don't and don't get each other's language don't talk the same language um, you know, you, 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 you're part of that yourself in, in bring, bringing together brand performance people, people together in your Firestars um, event back in 2018 that I came to. And it was very evident that, the, that there has been this split. And so it's not surprising that, the, that each party kind of defines itself differently and somehow looks, look, looks differently at the other, other side. So I, I think it's, um, yeah, it's really exciting to then try and cross-fertilize and, 
and, um, and what, and what I've experienced with jellyfish is, 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 a, is a huge hunger and interest in the sort of more traditional, more broad-based generalist marketing skills that, that, that I guess people like me have a bit more of. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's it, the cross-fertilization of the, of the two worlds is really exciting. Um, because it's not, you know, there hasn't been much of it. It's not, you, you can see it in the kind of creative work that we see on our phones every day. There's, a, there's an awful lot lacking from a lot of it. There's a, some of the, you know, the emotion and the storytelling and all those good things that the, the traditional marketing world has learned, um, you know, how to do and, you know, what works creatively isn't, isn't necessarily yet there in a lot of the spaces that are now um, uh, now we now have available to us, but that will come, and that's a very exciting thing. It's a kind of blank page in in some some senses. What was the second part of the question? Well, it's the the, the other converse of that, which is uh, yeah. creative agencies and ad tech. Do you think there's a big yeah. gap there? H huge. I mean, I I can only really speak for for the for the agencies I've I've been in, but the the creative agency world is a it's a bespoke world. It's a kind of Michelin star world of creativity, at least the world I've come from, where you every single time in a very human way are solving a creative problem in a in mostly an analog way with 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 purely with brain power and a you know and and a Mac. Um, the, there is not that much automation and technology in that world. Um, and I'm not sure I, I mean I'm sure there I'm sure there are people experimenting with it. What I'm now seeing in 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 the world I'm now in is 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 the beginnings the the possibility that those two worlds can come together and I you know for example working on a pitch recently where the the, the pitch brief was um they they wanted um it, I think ultimately that this this brand was going to need several hundred thousand videos a year and you know we we had a um we had a brief to to basically a test could we make a small number of these things in a in a in a week and um that was fascinating to me because it was you know you are you're doing the same thing which is is defining the problem that creatives needed to solve and briefing that creative a, a human creative team so a human strategist and a human creative team very quickly coming up with some some um some some words and ideas and and pictures which you know, over the course of a weekend we turned into video and then the automation kicked in and we were able to turn that into lots of video. Um, and in the end, we didn't, we didn't actually win it, but the, um, the, the, that kind of hybrid uh, human automation um, where you've got brilliant, smart human beings with creative and ingenious minds but with the benefit of technology to then scale that creativity in ways unfathomable um, only a few years ago um, is was quite something. Um, and actually, we understand that, the, that on that particular example, the creative um, that we produced what was better, tested better than, than, than some of the, the things that were being tested against, which I can only assume were more of a pure automation solution than the sort of hybrid human automation that we were we were doing so it's it's um it, it's really exciting and it's it's i'm learning loads of new things and i think there's there's just plenty for the industry to learn and to to experiment with and tr and to try as as you know humans and 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 technology come together in in all sorts of different and interesting ways um, and it, it just has to be the case that we'll get better solutions from doing the two things together at the same time. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a slightly different thing from the best of both, which was about long and short term together. But I think there's a again there's a convergence here, which is really exciting, um, which points to to, to 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 new and exciting things in the future. Fantastic. Um, so I'm going to come back to some of those things. I think because um, it's really interesting. But um, uh, talking about learnings and learning new things, I'd love to ask you a bit about uh, what's your biggest mistake. That you've made in your career and what do you learn from yeah. that at all those roles yeah um it, it wasn't God, it's such a hard question uh, it, it wasn't like a, an individual moment in time type mistake but i was thinking about this and it, it i think it was a um a kind of creeping cynicism that that often happens with planners as they as they kind of get more experienced and better at what they do and i, I think i was experiencing that a few years ago 
and um, I had a I had a, um, a review with um, the, the legendary Jim Carroll, and he pointed this out to me. Said, you know, if people were saying you're not, you know, you don't seem as passionate about the creative work as you should be, and at that point, I realised it's just you, you, as a as a when you're in the creative world, um, you, you you can't be cynical. You can't be in fact, uh, John Bartle, uh, the, the 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 one of the bees in BBH, used to talk about the, the three C's. In, um, which are really damaging, which are conservatism, cynicism, and uh, what's the other, complacency. Um, and I was obviously suffering from one of them. I think when you are in the business of creativity, um, cynicism is deathly, and you need to be positive and optimistic, and um, because it's about you know individuals trying to inspire other individuals, it's about teams of people coming together to have to have ideas, to have better ideas. And one of the problems with strategists, I think, is that we can be a bit kind of challenging, a bit negative sometimes. And it comes, there's a kind of, it's the flip side of being curious people, I think there's a sort of um, a challenge or a cynicism that kicks in. So that that was a, a, a good lesson and and something that I, um, yeah, I, I, I tr you know, it always creeps in a little bit, but, you know, trying to be positive and see see the you know the not be cynical when it comes particularly when it comes to creative problems um because as we used to say at bbh po positive people have bigger better ideas and that's you know it's all about um creative people having ideas and you know cynicism isn't, isn't a good thing in that in that situation i really like that um so, so i'm going to ask you now about the going back to the industry again because um we began to talk about a few things which were really interesting there about um pro probably future facing things i guess mm -hmm. about bringing data and creativity together in really interesting ways and automation and so on and so uh, i'd like to ask you a bit more about what you think your, your key insight is really for how the industry itself is changing or needs to change what's that yeah so i, I think i think we're entering um a period quite a big period of convergence um and that is being driven by the, the the dominance of the platforms so if you think about um the way that the advertising communications industry has developed over you know 100 years it's it, you know it, in the press age and the print age the advertising industry was a it was a little um sort of parasite around fleet street it was a it was something that was a you know it got it it, it, it was about the newspapers and it, and it made its kind of home around Fleet Street and newspapers. Then the second era, the sort of TV age, it shifted, this is London, by the way, not anywhere else, but it shifted to the world of TV as commercial TV became the, the dominant medium. Um, and that's when Soho became the place for the industry. And then you've now got this kind of third age of, of um, obviously digital internet, call it what you want, and that's ge not geographically based in the same way; it can be anywhere. Um, but you've got this, this, um, you know, the new kinds of agencies like Jellyfish, which are being born and growing through their relationships with the platforms. Um, and 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 what what we do, we kind of sit between the 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 the, the platforms themselves, the consumers, and the brands. We understand the brands' problems. We understand consumers and how they use the platforms, and we we understand are very close to the platforms, both as um, places where media is 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 bought and happens, but also as places where the creative is deployed and the content is consumed. And so, sitting between those three things, um, I think we've we're we're in a really interesting position because we're actually at this kind of convergence point. Um, where where media and creative and digital and technology are all coming together, um, and it and and solving that that you know that that problem of divergence that we had in the 90s and after that with the the, the divergence between media and creative. So we kind of I think convergence is what's what's happening, um, and particularly the the dominance of the platforms and understanding the platforms and the and you know. Uh, uh, the the algorithms and how they work and both i mean i found myself um briefing for the very first time briefing a, a creative person who was writing stuff for the algorithms in a way that i'd never experienced before so she she was you know we had a new brand strategy on a brand and um we needed to refresh all the creative and all the content 
and um, the the this creator, this copywriter was you know clearly writing the the new brand strategy, but for the app stores and you know in the knowledge that that copy was going to be not read by many human beings, but quite a lot of uh, you know, you know, robots essentially. So it's a uh, how how the how brands and consumers and and platforms come together is is really where it's where it's happening. I think. And I think uh, I guess the question here, if, um, taking that theme of convergence and consumers, brand platforms. I mean, do you think that um, you know creative and media separated? Um, do you think now is the time when it needs to come back together again in terms of an agency? I mean, I think you wrote in um, the wrong and the short of it about um, you know possibly there might be different types of agencies where where you've got. Um, uh, well, actually, I think it was in when you talk about your um, your role in Jellyfish about need strategic partners, media media planning, deployment, creative optimization, and then more specialist creative agencies, studios whose role is to create new assets to challenge those currently being deployed. Yeah. So you're really actually talking about a, a real genuine convergence of media and creative again. I think so. I mean, I I, I think and because of course media is changing. So the, the the heft that you used to need, the buying power. Of an, of an enormous buying shop that there was a there was a logic to that um but the algorithms don't require that so you do, so you don't need um you, you don't need you know thousands of people in in buildings in 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 madison avenue and 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 um you know in, in london d doing the media bit and the creative bit separately what you need is people who are very close to the to the platforms and the point of deployment of the content and the creative, um, and you know, we we at Jellyfish are we, we're doing the media bit, and we um, we know how all the platforms work. We know the algorithms. We're there, making sure the creative for each platform is optimized for the platform. Whether the creative comes from a, a, a pure create pure play creative agency or whether it's originated by us. Um, and of course, we then see the data before anybody else on how that, that work is performing. So it puts us in a really interesting position where we're kind of absolutely at the point of deployment in the platforms and we're there seeing 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 how consumers are responding. Um, and we're seeing that before anybody else, often before the clients. And so I think there's a there's a there's a world in which you have, and this probably isn't exclusive, I'm sure there'll be many different models, but that a, a sort of a form of agency like ours where you've got creative and media and digital and, and, and technology all in one place we're kind of you know and this this is of course rose tinted i'm now in a, in a new place and i'm 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 kind of you know whoever pays your salary you're going to be thinking this has to be the future hasn't it so i'm not i'm not unaware of of, of this kind of uh, you know, of that as a potential kind of pitfall in this argument but I, th I think there's something very interesting about having create pure creative agencies coming in every every year, every couple of years, refreshing the creative assets, kind of injecting some new brand DNA into the into the equation, and us taking that and deploying it and optimizing it on a more ongoing basis. And so, yeah, I can see a world, and you and you can see it already happening with there's some very very small new creative agencies who are. Now we're winning and able to handle some very big global brands, um, and you know th they've got 30, 40 people in in a in, you know not, not even in an office anywhere, mm. and and the those kinds of ag creative agencies um, partnering with a, an agency like ours to do the media and the and the and the data and the and the kind of the the, the more the closer to the platform bit of it because. A lot of times, those those creative agencies aren't that interested in doing a lot of the the the, the I guess the grunt work that, that that an agency like Jellyfish are very very happy to do. Um, so there's a there's a, there's some huge synergies um, and sort of complementarity in in you know how we will work um, with those kinds of agencies. So I do I do see a a version of the future where you've got um, people like our Cessful Capital and others. And then smaller pure play creative shops injecting some freshness, and in, you know I think I wrote about you know ch challenging the creative status quo, um, and because you know we all I think now know that you can't optimize creative and deliver a huge step change, 
you know, you you need new, you need a fresh injection of campaign ideas and and um, and assets um, to to really create step change. It's you know, optimization gives you incremental improvements, and so I can see a kind of a, a thing where if you if you as a brand want a a big step change in creative performance, you need a new a new idea, a new a new campaign. And then you let it run, and you let the algorithms run, and and see what works, and 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 see how the algorithms optimize uh, the campaigns. So yeah, there's a you know, having said that, we we are we're developing our creative muscle, and in time, we will probably be in a position to 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 do all of that. But you know, um, there are many ways that many different kinds of agency rosters that different kinds of clients, I'm sure, will. Will will want um, that will that will suit them. So I'm sure there are different versions of the future, but that's one. So, so what um, do you think that means when you have um, you know creators potentially writing stuff for algorithms, and you've got automation, which is enabling kind of scalability and optimization mm -hmm. of creative formats and, and treatments? What do you think that means for the creative process itself? Um, I don't know yet. I mean, I, I I've seen a bit of that happen and it seems it looks a bit like the normal creative process we've got people typing things and coming up with video and and having ideas what then i think what will happen if it's beginning to happen already is you, you know you create the assets you stick them into the hopper and you see what you know frankly what what the google algorithm does with them and i'm already seeing this i've seen seen really interesting kind of data visualizations on a on a particular client where we're sitting there seeing the assets being optimized almost in real time. We can see what what um, you know what what Google is essentially saying is the is the winner in a certain situation, and we can see the algorithm putting more more weight behind that particular asset. It's um, and the asset tends to be something that is it looks like an ad, it looks like a piece of video, and it tends to be the one that's more emotional and better. So I I, I it's not dramatically different um and I, I think i'm hoping that that the as we learn as as all of the platforms need to do both a a short-term sales job and a brand building job for their clients the algorithms will shift to be optimized not just for the short but also for the longer term and that that in itself will mean that the kind of creative work that is winning and that we're seeing more of on our devices is is going to be the stuff that's going to have a, a longer term, more sustainable kind of uh, um, part to play in in a, in a in a client or a brand's growth. Mm. So I'm quite optimistic because um, I've seen you know I've seen humans do really bad ads and I've seen uh, computers make really bad stuff but i've you know seen the opposite so i think a combination has to be the answer yeah that's um that makes a lot of sense so um i'd love because we kind of started talking about this about um the future of planning and marketing in the industry so i'd love to kind of ask you about mm -hmm. your prediction really I, I guess for where things are going and what you think the uh the future looks like yeah well i think i probably covered it so i think i think it's about um the the best human minds uh, um, creating the best uh, most distinctive most freshest creative assets for the algorithms to then um to to then do their do their business with um and it, so yeah the the best of both has to be human and human technology working together um you know so, some clients will 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 sit in a different place on that spectrum and and you know Michelin star uh, quality bespoke creativity isn't right for every brand and every client. Mm. Um, but then kind of M McDonald's style, highly automated um, uh, creativity isn't isn't uh, right for others. So I think I th the, 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 for me, the role of the strategist is in making sure that the ingredients that go into those recipes whether it's michelin star gastro pub or mcdonald's making sure the ingredients are as high quality as possible um so that you have the very best chance for that work to to to, to do the right thing for the brand and and be you know engage people um cut through 
um, make make an emotional impact on people and be be remembered by people because that's ultimately what what great um, campaigns need to do. So I yeah I'm optimistic that a combination will be the answer. And so that role there about um, with the ingredients, making sure that the ingredients are as high quality as possible, getting the balance right, I guess. So the, the role of the strategist perhaps in the future will be more about understanding what is the role for automation and algorithms and what is the role for the kind of the human part of that and getting the balance right, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, it, I, God, it's, uh, I don't know enough about this yet to, 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 to really predict, but I think, I think there has to be, yeah, more, Strategists are going to have to understand better how the automation works in order to make sure that what you know what we're coming up with is going to work, you know, in the in the platforms. Um, and I, you know, I can I know for a fact that I don't I I I don't know the the detail of that yet. There's probably going to be. I mean, we have you do get different kinds of strategists, don't you? Who are some of the more generalists and the, the broader base kind of marketing. Um, the sort of the marketing fundamentals are, are better known to some. And then the the the, the sort of um, the, the the more specialist creative strategies in each individual platform. I suspect there's going to be a role for, and we have we have a you know we have those two kinds of roles at Jellyfish where you've got people who really really get the platforms and understand exactly what's going to fly on each one. Um, the, the level of understanding you would need, I think, across every platform probably means you're going to need a couple of different types of strategists at least. Um, working alongside each other um, to to do that properly, because yeah, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't want to be the one that's um, having to 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 have all of that very specialist knowledge. It's not my it's, it's not my bag yet. And I have to ask you because uh, you, you wrote an excellent post recently about um, modern marketing myopia, as you called it, which was really about the over focus on the present mm -hmm. uh, at the expense of looking at the past, mm -hmm. the present, and the future. So I guess you were talking there, um, what you wrote about obsessing over sort of data and, and dashboards and Slack channels and what you called the apparatus and busyness of the modern marketing uh, or working environments. Um, so, I mean, how do you avoid that? If you're looking to optimize, you're looking at real time data, feedback and so on. How do you avoid, uh, you know, or step out of the present yeah. so that you can look at um, the past, present and future? Yeah. How do you avoid it? I, I mean, I. I think it, I think it's just it's it, again it's balance, isn't it? It's 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 lifting your head up and allowing yourself time to think, and it's 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 not only training your people or yourself on on the um, on the, the the specifics of the of the specific platforms, but also the fundamentals. It's making sure you as a team have a a, a broader broad enough base knowledge. It's making sure you as a as a as a brand have a really really strong permanent longer term view of 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 the world and where it wants to go um so i think you need to sort of at the moment i feel like um there's a kind of overcorrection that's necessary to to to, to rebalance um so that I, th I think it's about that really i mean in time i suspect there'll be you know uh, as as some of the kinds of you know that there will be less less manual um, data analysis required as, as more and more of the bits of the, of the marketing kind of automation become even more automated. So actually that may free up time to be more creative and to be more, I suppose, visionary or to, to think about the longer term. If the shorter term is gonna be handled uh, by by the, the technology we have available, then maybe maybe um, you know that allows more of the human time and creativity, uh, sort of human creativity, to be put put into um, it, yeah into kind of lo the the longer term thinking that we need to do. So yeah, I, again, I'm um, reasonably optimistic. Um, the myopia thing was yeah, it's uh, it's I think it's probably a, a um, again it's a form of best of bothism. It's about it's about balance. So yeah, keep coming back to this theme repetitively. Sorry, <laughs> no, that's a great point. And and I think you you also said about um, not forgetting that sort of the data represents real humans, real behaviours. You know, which has always been the kind of role of a, a good planner, hasn't it? Really. Um, yeah. So I mean, I'd love to ask you uh, now, of course, Mike, a kind of catch-all question at the end, which is uh, really about the question uh, that you wish that I'd asked you and what your answer is to it. So Tom, can I ask that question of you now? Yeah. I mean, uh, 
again, I prob probably sort of covered it, but the, the question was going to be, what, what are you most excited about at Jellyfish in relation to strategy? Um, and I think it's about, my answer to that is about um, the chance that we've got to enter into a new a new era really for strategists in in the in the um, in sort of marketing communications world where if if when planners and strategists were first born there was a kind of foundational period where you know in the 60s and 70s where we we're kind of lear learning what it was all about and then as i described there was this phase of fragmentation where everyone became um kind of disconnected and rather too specialized in their different um silos i'm very excited about the possibility of the coming together of a kind of you know, third, third era, let's call it, of, of strategy and planning in, in agencies, which is which is about um, convergence. It's about the holistic view. It's about having um, you know kind of the total team with you know people who have the broader picture and the longer term view, as well as the the shorter term channel um, channel centric view. Um, so I I, it, I think that we with convergence of agencies and new kinds of agency models, there's a there's a quite an exciting possibility for a new, a third age of planning, if you like. Fantastic, um, Tom. I love your optimism, and uh, <laughs> it's interesting to hear that. So, so thank you, and um, thank you very much for being a part of uh, Fastos. I think we're about running out of time, but um, uh, great to have you again. And um, thank you for everyone for uh, watching. Of course, don't forget to like and uh, share the video. But um, my thanks again to uh, to Tom Roach. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. Thanks so much, Neil.